Well folks, another week, another Jujutsu Kaisen chapter spoilers and leaks, and chapter 233 is perhaps the craziest chapter as far as the turn and events in back to back chapters. We got a lot more Gojo hype on the horizon, but on Sukuna's side, there might be this inevitable sense of dissatisfaction. However, Sukuna was cooking. Sukuna is just being Sukuna. This is his plan, and we see the results of his plan. A 3v1 slam jam. However, my brothers and sisters, Gojo has one last hope left in an effort to defeat an adapted Maharaga with the 10 shadows technique. So let's hop straight into it. This chapter, we start off with the evil demon Maharaga finally reaching Gojo and able to adapt to the neutral infinity deemed untouchable. Yuji remarks that they are on equal footing now that it's adapted to it, but Shoko remarks that Gojo's reverse curse technique is actually a little slow because it's output is decreasing. She also says it's the same for Sukuna's reverse curse technique since he had brain damage. So they are both really picking away at one another. However, Mahoraga is such a hard counter for Gojo's technique. The narration emphasizes even if the opponent is the strongest of all time, the king of curses, Ryoman Sukuna, everyone considered the impossible, including Gojo losing. The same also applies for Gojo himself. And the last time Gojo ever thought of losing was against Hoji as an opponent. Gege just had to sneak him in somehow. But as the thought of losing closes in, a greater feeling emerges satisfaction, the absolute strength, and the loneliness that comes with it. What's filling him up now is, and now we can only imagine Gojo is very satisfied and happy to fight here and now with Sukuna with pure joy of the thrill of battle. Gojo steals himself and chants empowered words mid-fight in order to regain his curse technique reversal's output. Gojo taunts Sukuna since he was knocked out by Black Flash, saying how long is he gonna rest? Suddenly, when Gojo unleashed Red, Rabbit Escape covered the area and it gave Sukuna time for Maharaga to avoid Red and keep distance in order to launch a counter-strike. So now it's a 2v1 and Sukuna throws an extinguisher as a kind of smokescreen so now he can let Maharaga bypass infinity and Sukuna uses the same technique and the form as Chozo in order to perform piercing blood but instead of an actual blood technique he uses Max Elephant's water like a high pressure convergence nozzle and even Gojo admits that Sukuna is just as skilled as he is. Sukuna's Mizushi Shrine and the Ten Shadows Curse technique cannot be used at the same time unless an external domain is added. That's very important. Sukuna used other Shikigami like the technique he just used because he got more resources and adapted to infinity. However, adapting to the enhanced Limitless Red will take more time compared to his blue laps. So that's overall a better option than just getting rid of his cards altogether. Sukuna then says it's not just a 2v1, it's a 3v1 as he summons another massive Chimera Beast combining Nue and Totality called Chimera Beast Agito. Gojo can't help but to point out Sukuna looks like a small lost child in between these two massive monsters. So basically, it's like Sukuna's getting carried by Mami Agito and Daddy Maharaga. I swear, Gege's timing and comedy is crazy because this is the literal joke of this fight. And now Sukuna looks proud that it's a 3v1. I don't know, Sukuna getting the most grimiest tactics done. It's not JJK without some jujutsu jumping. The jumping now commences and Gojo doesn't get hit once. He outmaneuvers both the Shikigami and tries to lay down pressure on Sukuna. However, Sukuna is an absolute unit, by the way. The way he emerged from the shadows and tries to jump in with two behemoths is insane. No one else besides Gojo is dealing with this madness. Gojo finds out his curse technique is losing output, and when he tries to fire red on Maharaga, the adaptation is gradually increasing and making the impact weaker. So it looks like Gojo only has that to one-shot Maharaga. 
and Gojo knows it's a big charge, so Sukuna will notice it. It does sound like hollow purple, doesn't it? And Sukuna is purposefully attacking nonstop as not to give Gojo any moment to recover, but he has no other choice. I have to use it. The unlimited hollow technique. So what do you guys think? Is it a new ability or is it just hollow purple? Based on that end note, there's a secret plan behind his smile. It's probably something that we haven't seen before, but you know, you gotta let Gojo cook. We can give Sukuna the benefit of the doubt and let him cook. So now it's time to let Gojo cook. This chapter was insane. Sukuna pretty much just embraces all the cheap tricks and the jumping, but let's see what he really has. It's basically like Hinted Shrine isn't doing anything on its own because it wouldn't really bypass infinity, and it can't even be used with 10 shadows unless a domain is applied to it, and at that point inside a domain, of course your attacks would reach. To me, it looks like 10 Shadow does carry quite a bit in this fight, and there is really no problem with that because that is Sukuna's smartest play and likely a stronger counter than what Sukuna could possibly do on his own. The scariest thing for me in this fight is if Gojo launches his plan or his new technique and it doesn't work. That is a terrifying thought because this is Gojo's last option, but I think Gojo might pull through and will enter a newer stage of this fight because it's now or nothing. Gojo needs to defeat the 10 shadows technique now. That's it for this one, my brothers and sisters. This chapter was mad fun. Gege has us by chokehold right now. Gojo really has to pull this off or it just might be over. And I pray Gege does let Gojo cook because I swear he wants him gone so bad. But remember to like and sub for more videos like this. This has been Enemy Stand User and I'll see you awesome guys in the next one. Bye bye.